A very good morning to you and a pleasure to have you join us on the programme Off the Press, where we take a look at the headlines and with the help of our guests, we try to make sense of it so you can make informed decisions. My name is Felicity Ezewike and happy celebrations to our Muslim brothers and sisters. I'd like to start things off with the nation. Uh, the big one on the front page, Governor accuses military of sabotage in convoy attack. That's it on your screen now. There's a rider to it. It says, Army to probe incident, soldier shoots dead officer, blasts rock made degree. Bono isn't seeing the best of times right now. Um, our thoughts are with them. Pilgrims observe coronavirus rules at Hajj in Saudi. Oyo opens Eid grounds, FCT shot to recreation centers. Just above the headline of the governor accuses uh, military of sabotaging convoy attack, we have, we wish our numerous readers Eid, Eid Mubarak, and that's a greeting from the nation newspaper. We're celebrating our Muslim brothers and sisters today. Um, at the top of it, Edo 2020 is still there. Nothing to show for Basaki's four years, says Odige. PDP Diltry as youths and does is a yamu. Decent people backing governor for re-election. Uh, the rhetorics continue. Uh, Second Republic Senator Fashomi dies at 94. Go on six prayer for Nigeria's unity and security persists. You find details on page 25 of the paper. And uh, we have a new NBA president in the person of Akpata. The nation presents it this way. NBA president Akpata defeats additional Adibade. San folds process. You find details on page seven on the paper. Um, NNPC, no stolen no stolen crude oil found in China. Ndidi begs funds for Leicester's UCL miss. Uh, there's a bit of sports for you on the front page of the Nation uh, newspaper. Uh, if you go to the very bottom of the paper, just um, beneath the photograph on the front page, uh, you see Trump raises possibility of a US poll delay. Uh, I'm sure uh, they will fight him on that one. Uh, lawmakers certainly will. Uh, let's see what plays out. Uh, we also have coronavirus stories uh, table for you. Uh, details inside the latest figure. All right, let's welcome our guest this morning, Aisha Yusufu, the co-convener of Bring Back Our Girls Group. Thank you for joining us and good morning. Hello, uh, thank you so much uh, for having me. Good morning and welcome to Sala. Back uh, salad. Of course, it's a big seller in the Kabir. And uh, uh, well, the story of the coronavirus, uh, it's everywhere, as you can see it at the Hajj. Normally, you know, it's a place where you have millions of people partaking, over three million sometimes, but this time it's quite a few number of people. And then, of course, we see uh, the observation and of, uh, how everything is being done. And I think it, that should be a reminder for all of us. Amidst whatever we want to do, we should put health first, but because even God wants us uh, to be uh, to be healthy. Uh, at the same time, also, we say, I mean, the soul of Senator Fasami, uh, who died at 94, uh, continue uh, to, to rest in peace. Amen. The big one there, uh, governor accuses military of sabotage in convoy attack. It's, you know, it, it, it's so sad what is going on, especially when you look at the issue of security and the issue of uh, uh, the, the, the war against Boko Haram seeming to be unending, where we, we seem to go one, foot, uh, one step forward and then ten steps backward. It, it's really sad. And... It's, it's, it's just so it's just so overwhelming every day when you keep on hearing the stories and all of that that is happening. But the most painful part of it all is the fact that at the end of the day, you find 
maybe nothing will be done. Nothing will happen. It will just go on. We continue. continue everything continues uh, as as always. It's really. But, 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 but that narrative happens. needs to change, don't you think? That we should have, you know, cause and effect. When something happens, it should be an investigation, and the people should be made uh, to know these things. Uh, how can we begin to work towards that? Because I mean, we can't continue with the mindset that nothing is going to happen. Uh, don't you think so? Absolutely. It should, it should be, we shouldn't continue with that mindset. There must be uh, punishment for bad behavior. There must be rewards for good behavior. And until we do that, as a nation, we are not going to develop. But then it's best done on the people who are in position, people who are in power, to have the political will to do the right thing, to ensure that the right thing is being done. Otherwise, we just keep going round and round the circle. And, you know, at the end of the day, they, uh, you know, there will be accusations, things will happen, and then nothing will really uh, be, be done about it. It's quite sad, it's quite painful. But as citizens, what do we do? We'll continue to make demands on those who we are. Uh, maybe we should join uh, the um, former leader, Gowon, when he says uh, Nigeria needs prayers. Uh, I mean, is that the way to go now? Uh, you know, you know the thing. It's so sad the way uh, we we always want to abdicate our responsibilities to God, and this is part of the things that has always uh, been a problem in, in Nigeria. We we seem to think we have the patent to uh, prayers, uh, to, we have the patent to God, and then when we call on God, and then He has to do our bidding. The thing is that God will not do for us what He has given us the capacity uh, to to do for for, for ourselves. So we have to do it. It's not about abdicating our responsibilities to God. And all of these are leaders, both present and past leaders. Whenever they they, 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 they get, I, I just don't know. They just use prayers to, to just uh, to shy away from their responsibilities and doing the right thing. All right. Now let's uh, move on to the Nigerian Tribune and see what they're saying this morning. Um, if Ami can't secure Baga, we will mobilize hunters. That's a Borno governor talking tough there. Uh, we will investigate attack on Zulum's convoy, says Ami. Two killed, 16 injured as explosion rocks Borno. Soldier shoots, kills officer in Borno. A lot seems to be going on in that stage. And then we have... Um, COVID-19, restrictions, not punishment. Bukhari tells Nigerians at Salah. Uh, just beside it, you see FG begins to move to reduce cost in oil and gas industry. APC rejects creation of 39 new political wards in Aquaibum. Um, if we flip to the top of the paper, uh, the MBA presidency is also captured here. Uh, Idel Kabir, Oyo opens praying grounds, own door bans, Eid prayer. Uh, different strokes, some would say, for different uh, folks. Um, we also have other headlines there that might interest you. FIRS extends uh, filing deadline by seven days. Trump suggests delay to 2020 U.S. presidential election and 48 million barrels stolen crude oil. Our story, the NNPC is talking. Go find it a story in page 30 um, of the paper. I'll come back to you, Aisha. Um, which of this would you want to take? Um, because uh, we've talked a bit about the Borneo situation, uh, but would you want to speak a little further on the uh, issue of investigation? Uh, well, well it, it comes down to that uh, particular way you say, uh, if Ami can secure Baga, will mobilize hunters. I mean, it, it, it's, just, it's just comical. I mean, so what is happening in, in, in our country, but at the same time, it's so painful because you know, this is something that is very serious. We find, talking about this war against insurgents, there are other countries who have had to go through uh, this same problem. But you find that the way they tackle their war against insurgents is different from the way we, we tackle it. Military, we go in, that we secure a place, they ensure not only fight off the insurgents, but they secure the place. In our own case, it seems our own, we just go in, do the fight, and then leave the place, and then the insurgents come and take over again. It, it, it's really... Uh, quite sad and, and, and quite painful. But having said that, uh, for me, is to look at the issue of uh, uh, the, the, the federal government uh, begins move to reduce cost in oil and gas uh, industry. 
and also uh, linking it to this, another one for the 8 million barrels stolen in uh, crude oil, our story, NNPC. I mean, for me, uh, uh, personally, I think uh, it, it's high time that uh, sector is it's completely irregularized. And, uh, and of course, the government should have its hands up there. Let, you know, privatize uh, the refineries, do a whole lot of things. Let the government focus on Tax, tax taxation and also focus on policy making instead of running a whole lot most of these uh, businesses and at the end of the day we are losing so much and you know people will think a lot of people corruption people will collect 30 millions of dollars look the other way and for the nation we are losing so much more and it, it, it's really quite sad especially in, in a place where we need every bit of money uh, that we can get uh, as a nation and then the other one here I would look at is this COVID-19 restriction, not punishment, to highly tells Nigerians at seller. And I think uh, every Nigerian should think that way. This is, the restrictions that are being given, it's not to punish anybody. If we pray in our houses, it doesn't mean that God will not accept our prayers. And, this, and God also has said that we should not put our lives at, at risk. And it, even the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have said that whenever there is a, an epidemic, we should not leave the place of the epidemic if you're already there. And also, we should not go there if, uh, if, if you're out of that place. So there are rules that have been set aside. When it comes to uh, this kind of restriction, people stay in, in a to lockdown and all, everything. It's already uh, imposed in Islam. So I don't understand why people are so eager to put themselves in, in danger just to show up. We are so much into religiosity rather than into uh, worshipping God the way uh, we do. It ought to be done. We want to be seen to worship God more than the actual act, and it seems uh, to be. All right, um, let's uh, take a look at the punch now. Uh, widows, IDPs, knock FG over amnesty for Boko Haram uh, fighters. A couple of riders do it, three actually. Um, my children are fatherless, insurgents must be prosecuted, says Boronu Woman. I'm sad government is rele releasing insurgents who killed my husband, abducted my daughter. Um, we also have our recruit local hunters to secure bagger if soldiers can't, Zulum says, after attack. Um, still on the situation with um, uh, the insurgency um, in the north. Uh, Salah Rams are on the front page of the Punch newspaper. And then uh, we also have uh, just above the masthead, bread price increase looms as wheat cost rise 33%. WHO predicts increased COVID-19 infections as Muslims celebrate Salah. Uh, Bukhari Afeniferi mourn others mourn as Fasumi dies at 94. At the bottom of the paper, we have Tunubu Dogara 2023, Presidential ticket, Mayor Rumo, you be governor. Soldiers goes basag, kills officer over frozen salary account. Um, there are some other stories here, but let's give um, Aisha a, a lot more talk time by letting her take um, um, anyone that caught her attention quickly. Uh, so uh, the, the, the big one there is one that, that actually uh, catches my attention the most, and the widows' IDPs knock FG over amnesty for Boko Haram fighters. I just don't understand. I, I don't understand where this uh, program, uh, where this is coming from. Uh, this de-radicalization, this setting Boko Haram fighters who have killed and maimed people. There hasn't been justice uh, for, for, for a lot of the, for, for the victims. And yet you now release them back into the uh, society among the people that they had killed. I know the issue with Boko Haram is that the way they killed, it's so heinous. Most of them, what they did, to, they, they slaughtered family members in front of their, of their loved ones. Husbands were killed in front of children and, 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 and women. I, I mean, you know, so, and all of a sudden, these people, you release them back in, into the society again. It, it's bad. It's, it, it's unbelievable. I don't know whether they think that just by doing this, the other Boko Haram members are going to lay down their weapons. And, and I don't know what, what they're thinking about. But it is very, very, it is heinous. And if you do not take time, it's going to bring another whole lot of problem in place. But I don't, also the eagerness to release them back into society, where is it coming from? We are still fighting this war. We haven't won this war. 
we haven't gotten everybody, you know, there hasn't been a reconciliation uh, uh, amongst uh, the poor, uh, where everybody is taking care of the victims and the, these perpetrators. And all of a sudden, the nation is so eager to just have them back uh, into the society. To do what? To be facing the people that they give or to give more information to the people, to, 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 the, to, the, to, to other Boko Haram uh, members. Even the prisons are there. They hadn't gone to court. It's like if, if you can kill in such heinous manner and then you still release back to your people, then why do we have people in prisons? Why are the people who have committed murder, people who have stolen somebody? Somebody is in prison for, for years, sometimes 10 years, for just stealing maybe some little item. And they yet we are eager to have Boko Haram uh, go back there. And I think that it's high time that uh, our government have have everything uh, on that one. And then uh, the, the top one there also where uh, WHO predicts increase in COVID-19 infection as Muslims celebrate asylum all over the world. It, it's really sad because as Muslims, we, we, we I'm a Muslim, and I know we have certain rules and regulations about things like this, which we have been told. Even the prophet gave example about all of this. So I, I wonder why this eagerness where people have that they have to go to those places of worship. You don't have to be there. God understands. And, you know, God is merciful. He understands. He is. He, he allows us to, to do things that would not uh, put ourselves in danger. And as human beings, self-comfort, we're supposed to put ourselves, uh, uh, not to be in danger, and also not to endanger another person. Because if anyone goes to eat and somebody... You, and you don't know you have COVID-19, and somebody gets it for you, from, from that, from you, then definitely the, 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 how do I put it, uh, a, a sin will be on you for putting yourself in that position. So right. I don't know why people are so eager to be out there uh, uh, to, to, to celebrate either, not just there at home, and ensure that they are safe and they, every other person is safe too. All right, let's take a look at the Guardian newspaper and see what we can do in the time left. Social food businesses lose 300 billion naira to COVID-19. Uh, thousands lose jobs to pandemic. Hoteliers warn of grave consequences, seek bailout. And then Ida Kabir again on the front page. Um, autumn, autumn bars Vietia last guards in Bainway. A Fenifera leader dies at 94. Be patient. Pray, Buhari Saraki tells Nigerians at Salah. Over to you, Aisha. Ah, uh, so, so, so that particular one, be patient, pray. Well, Nigerians are, I think they are the most patient people uh, in, in, in the world. Otherwise, uh, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't have a, a president who has been as incompetent as Buhari has been, and then yet citizens are not on the street demanding for his resignation. So Nigerians are already patient, and that's, that's what... Uh, on the issue of social food businesses, I uh, lose 300 billion to COVID-19. It, 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 it's quite sad, but that's the reality that we have uh, there. And tells us to lose jobs to pandemic hoteliers, one of the great, great consequences, and seek bailout. Well, most times, you know, people think that governance does not affect their lives. I mean, when we were shouting on the fact that, look, the SS food account has been depleted, our nation, we don't have money, we are borrowing to service debt, and all of this. Many other people went on with their business thinking that as long as their businesses were okay, then everything was okay. Now we, we see what it is. Other countries are helping out their businesses. They're being paid out. Uh, uh, salaries are being paid uh, uh, to, to other, uh, to, to, in other countries by their government, even, even when the businesses are closed. And this is the effect of when you don't have good governance in place, when you don't have anything to do, any bail bailout. And, it, I think for me, the lesson we should learn from COVID-19 is that governance affects us in every part of our, our life, our life, even when we think our, we are, we're doing so well. And sadly, this is part of the problem that we're going to face. We already have a such large uh, percentage of unemployment, and right now we are facing uh, we, we are facing more uh, of this percentage increasing, uh, and it is quite sad. But hopefully, Nigeria begins. Begin to, Nigerians begin to make the man and know that governance affects all of us, no matter how good they think they are having it at any time. I certainly look forward to us uh, hopefully um, making demands that will get the requisite response. Thank you very much, Aisha, um, Aisha Yusufu, for your time and your thoughts. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. All right, take care and happy celebrations again.
Thank you. Same to you. <laughs> Thanks. And that's how we wrap things up this morning and off the press. And the program returns Monday at 8.30 a.m. Take a look at the papers and make sense of it. Join us on PLOS TV Africa. My name is Felicity Ezewike. I'll see you in a bit.